Oh my gosh, it's a miracle. I'm actually live. <laughs> okay, that took me forever. So I'm starting to figure out some technical stuff. Apparently you have to do a little dance with your phone before you give it the orientation. And I must have done that on accident the very first time I did this. So it just worked and I didn't realize what I was doing. So now I'm actually learning with intention what I have to be doing. So yay, we're here. All right, welcome back everybody. My name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist. And today we are painting the beautiful rain boot. We are having so much rain all over the country that, I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. I've got my ambient <sighs> ocean waves going in the background. So anyway, we have had so much rain all over the place. I mean, it's been crazy, record-breaking amounts. I hope everybody's safe. My prayers are with everybody. We have had a lot of people who um, are not doing very well here in Guthrie, Oklahoma. A lot of flooding and people's homes literally falling off into a lake, and it's just been nuts. Uh, but sun's been shining last couple of days. That's been good. I think we may have a few more days of rain. But anyway, I thought, well... Next in line was my rain boot. And I thought, well, that's appropriate timing. We could all use our rain boots right now. All right, so let me show you what we've got here. This is my model that I have in my class. And I actually will not be doing the buffalo check today. I do have a beautiful video on my channel with buffalo check. It's pretty time consuming. And so we needed to edit that video or else you'd just be like, you know, yawning and getting kind of tired watching me just painting all those checks and everything. But we do have a tutorial for this with a truck. It's like a farm truck with chickens and we have the whole truck that's in a buffalo check. So you're welcome to go watch that to learn how to do that. But this is the model and the inspiration. And then today we will be doing a little smaller version and I have my beautiful templates. These are available on my website. All right, so we have, it'll look like this. You can just download these on your computer, print them out. We do recommend hard cardstock, just makes it easier to cut. And so, but yeah, it just looks like this. It's super awesome, makes it very, very easy. And then I'm going to teach you how to do all the roses. That's just a very easy free-handed step. So I'm gonna teach you all of that. Uh, so, but first let's do a quick little review of all of our tools and supplies. I always have all of this information um, on my website and down below in the description. By the way, website is just tipsyartist.com. Real easy, tipsyartist.com. You can find everything you need there. And then let's, again, talk about tools. So we've got our little family of brushes. All right, we have Big Daddy and then Mama. And then we've got Little Buddy, Little Bit. I've got my acrylic paint all ready to go here. And then we have Bucket of Water to give them a bath. My little family of brushes, that is. All right, and then paper towels to dry them off. All right, so we've got just about everything we need here, lots of extra paint, all that good stuff. I went ahead and traced all this out ahead of time. And for those of you who don't know and haven't been in one of my classes before, um, I don't ever teach with these in my live shows because um, it's a little bit too challenging there. But in all my tutorials, I love, love, love Sharpies. Sharpies are wonderful. They do maintain that um, nice hard line that you can see through the paint, which I actually love. I love to have that. And so trace it out with Sharpie. So Sharpie is another great tool here. All right, so I am gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna get this party started. All right, so I'm gonna start with my Big Daddy brush. Here's Big Daddy. This is the biggest brush that we've got. And we're actually just gonna go ahead and start in the background here. And I'm just gonna do a basic black. It'll just be really easy. No mixing on this. All right, so we have Yes, again, Big Daddy brush, pure black paint, no mixing. I am gonna go ahead and just press back and forth here into the paint. All loaded up. I don't add any water uh, to the paint because this is like a medium bodied, student grade acrylic paint. So uh, any more water would make it a little bit too watery. It is just the right consistency, just the way it is. All right, so this brush is all ready to go, and I'm gonna go ahead and start to paint into my background here. So when I am doing a large area here in the background, I wanna go ahead and hold that brush just slightly over to the side here, make that flat side of the brush 
face the canvas. I'm gonna grab a little bit more paint here. All right, so again, you can see flat side of the brush facing the canvas here. This is how you wanna hold the brush when you are working into that larger area. When you start to do your cut-in work though, you wanna change how you hold that brush. And then see how this gives you a really nice thin line edge, a lot more control when you do that. That allows me to get right up next to that edge. Go right up next to it. Keep that control going. And if that makes you a little bit nervous to do that, you can take it nice and slow and just get right up next to the edge like this and then just kind of lightly pull out just like that. That's another way to do that too. So once I've got that line edge there, then I can go ahead and again, turn my brush over to the side. And then this will allow me to have, again, that really nice thick coverage over the surface. Now here in just a minute, we're gonna start some more intricate cutout work. So I will switch my brushes because I do need to be able to get into some smaller spaces here. And then this brush can be a little bit challenging, a little bit too big. So we'll switch over to our little buddy brush. And then, let's see, where's my little buddy? So this is little buddy. This is, um, he's the oldest of the two kiddos. He's got a little flat top here. That one's having a bad hair day. I'm gonna put him away. I like this one better. All right, we did, he took the time to do his hair for me. That's awesome. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and use him to get into these smaller areas here. And see, once I've got my cut in work, then I can go ahead and go back to my big daddy brush and then finish out the rest of my background work here. So continue taking this all the way around. Again, remember to hold that brush just like you'd hold a pencil or a pen. Most of us still do that activity every day. I know that the iPhone has eliminated a lot of our writing, so I can tell by my kids' handwriting. They can't write anymore. It's kind of sad. I'm gonna kind of turn it up here to the vertical position to get into these little grooves in here. All right, awesome. And then we have a little bit more cut-in work up here to do. Just keep taking this all the way around. Alright, so all my cutting work is done. Now I'm going to switch back over to my Big Daddy brush. And I'm going to continue working all of this in here to the background. Now for the most part, black has pretty good coverage over the surface. So you can be pretty relaxed with how you hold the brush. But again, if you are dealing with a little bit of that transparency that happens where you see that, well, you can see it happening a little bit right there, just where you see that peekaboo of the canvas showing through. Again, just remember that you do have your brush a little bit more loaded up with paint on the flat side like that, and then turn it over to the side 
and this will give you, it's kind of an awkward hold on the brush, but again, that awkwardness gives you a more gentle hand and it allows more of that paint to just lightly rest on the surface of the canvas. So we continue filling all this in up here. We are almost done with our background. Yay, very nice. Okay, awesome. And if you do want to continue to paint in all the sides, uh, you're more than welcome to do that. That's another additional um, little nice thing you can do so that you can just hang it on your wall as is and not have to worry about putting it in a frame. So that's another added touch. So I do so many paintings. I don't really mess with all that, but you're welcome to do that too if you want. Um, and so you can, but you will need to, if you've already done all this, you'll want to wait and do that at the very end where you can just kind of touch it up on each side. And then that way you're not putting your fingers into your wet paint right now. So, all right, now I'm going to put my big daddy in the bath and then next up i am going to mix up some really pretty turquoise i'm going to have that here in my rain boot i went beautiful yeah i was thinking do i want hot pink nah what turquoise what turquoise all right so let's do another big daddy brush here all right big daddy yay i need a big brush again so i want a big dollop of blue this is a cobalt blue, and then I want a big dollop of the green, and then a big dollop of the white. So it's about three equal parts here, blue, green, and white. I'm going to mix all of those together, and this will give me a beautiful turquoise color. See that? That's awesome. All right, now you can kind of play with this mix a little bit too, add some variety to it. Uh, so turquoise is awesome. It can go a lot of different directions. Of course, it does change dramatically, so you can add a whole lot more white, and that almost brings it to what I would start to call more of a seafoam color. You can add a whole lot of white to do that. Let's get that out there. See, way up there. Then you can add a lot more green to it, which gives you more of a teal color. More teal with the green. And then of course, just more of that even mix of all three together gives you just more of that pure turquoise color, what people traditionally call turquoise. All right, so now we have a lot of beautiful turquoise mixed up and again, about three equal parts, blue, green, and white. Awesome, you got it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and paint into this lovely rain boot here. And in my larger sections, I can use the bigger side here of the brush and the bigger brush. Now, when we start to get into some more intricate areas with cut-in work, I'm going to do as much as I can with this bigger brush. And then I'm going to have to put on my superhero glasses and get a smaller brush. But I do want to make sure that we use that trick where we turn the handle more over to the side, get really good coverage over the surface. And then I'm going to start my cut-in work. So I'm going to go back to using my little buddy brush here. There he is. All right. And put my big daddy over here to the side. All right. And then I got to see what I'm doing. All right. So here we go. Yeah, I'm getting into some smaller areas here. So I'm loading up little buddy. Ta -da. And I need to start to do my cut in work. So I'm gonna hold that brush again, just like you'd hold a pencil or a pen. And then start to cut in around those shapes. And then you can see this uh, brush stroke does give you more of a heavier hand. And so 
it starts to dig into the paint a little bit. So once I get that first coat down, I am gonna to have to come back over it with that lighter hand, again, parallel to the canvas and finish out the rest of that cut in work there. So I'm gonna continue this all the way around these shapes here. And keep in mind, these painting classes are for beginners. That is my specialty. I deal with beginners. So I majored, some people go, it's funny, people go, did you go to school for that? Because a lot of artists don't, because you don't really have to. But I did go to Texas Tech University and I majored in painting and I minored in drawing and I taught school and classes for a long time and of course been doing tipsy artists for a long time and through all of that and having done various kinds of classes I have discovered that my strength and my niche and my passion is teaching beginners how to paint. It all started with teaching kindergartners a very long time ago. And I loved it. I loved teaching kindergartners. And then as I became older, I realized that I had a lot of women in my classes and women with wine or <laughs> not the same as, you know, five-year-olds painting. It's awesome. So, yeah, it's all good. But I love it, and I love focusing on this as a method and a way to be very therapeutic. It's really, really important to have that in our life. All right, so I'm doing the cutting work, but one of the things that you're gonna notice, and I actually picked up a little bit of black here too, and that is okay. It does change the color a little bit. It's making it, you know, a little bit, I mean, it's definitely different. It's got more of a slate feel to it. So it is changing it, but that's okay. And that is my honey bear. He is back from Ace Hardware. He's working on projects today. And I may even have to use my uh, little bit brush. It's getting kind of tiny in here. getting pretty tiny. I'm also noticing a lot of brush strokes happening because this is such a small brush, so I will finish up with a larger brush because I don't want all those tiny brush strokes in there. It's okay for this first coat to use a smaller brush and do the cut-in work, but we do want to eliminate some of that small, tiny brush work. And I'm just doing a slight little press and then lift off here for these tiny areas. And then again, seeing lots of brush strokes there. So I am gonna switch back over to Big Daddy here. Let's get this going. Let's give him a little bit of a bath here. Make sure and dry them off. You don't want any water runs in your paint. That happens if you have any excess water on the edge there. All right, so nice and dry, good job. And then I'm gonna go back into that same color and then just start to lightly go over the top here. 
I'm going to come in over the top and just make sure I get a nice thick coat of paint over the top and try to eliminate any transparencies that I may still see or any tiny little brush strokes in there. So this is a great way to do your second coat. Again, holding that brush more over to the side. No matter which direction you're going, vertical or horizontal, and just keep taking it all the way across. That's looking awesome. I'll go ahead and just smooth this out a tad. Okay, cool. All right, now I'm going to start to work on these roses here. What's going to be next? And so we're going to do some solid flat color into the background. Giving that brush a bath, make sure it's nice and dry before we go into more color here. And we don't want any water runs down the canvas. And then I'm going to mix up some light pinks and then also let's do some purples. So I've got some fun colors over here loaded up, ready to go. I'm going to start with the pink. So I'm going to start with some red first and then a little bit of white. All right, so I've got my dollop of red and then some of that white. I'm going to mix those two together. And then I'm going to go ahead and start pushing these into those shapes. So now I do hold it just a little bit more like you'd hold a pencil. It gives me good control to make those circular patterns. And this first stage is very easy because we just push color into those shapes. And when I initially traced out my roses here, I just made what looks, they, they really just look like lumpy circles to begin with. So very, very easy at the beginning. Again, just like lumpy circles at the beginning. And then I just paint into those. So I'm gonna do a few more here that are just that pink color. Another one here. And again, if you have transparency, remember to come back over the top with the flat side of the brush. And then I'm going to do some purple ones up here. So this is a little bit smaller, so I'm going to come in with my mama brush. And she's the next biggest flat, and I want a little bit of white with some purple. And when we mix the white with the purple, it's gonna make a little bit of a, like more of a lavender color, but this is a really nice color. If you do purple, it has a tendency to be very transparent, difficult to paint with. And then also I feel like the lavender receives the layers of the rose better. Because we can actually come back in to this lighter lavender color with some deeper, darker tones of that purple, and it's really nice over the top. So again, I'm gonna start lighter, add a little bit of white to that purple, and then we've got our lavender here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and push this in over the top. And then same thing on this side. Just gonna push that in a circular motion, and just getting that background color done. This is what I call color blocking and just working that into the background there. All right, next up we're gonna do some fun leaves. Very easy on this. I do need to use a little bit brush. So this is a little bit. This is the tiniest brush that you've got. They typically call this a liner. And I'm going to mix up just green and white to make a really pretty spring green. So I'm gonna pick up some of that green here, a little bit of white, mix those two together. And that also really helps it cover better on the canvas. Pure uh, emerald green on the canvas, especially with uh, this medium body paint, has a tendency to be very translucent. 
And so if you add that little bit of white to it, really helps it cover better. Plus it just makes a really pretty, vibrant, bright green. It has nice coverage over the surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to paint this into these leaves, the basic shape here of the leaf pattern. For beginners, I tell them to make what looks like a parentheses and then another parentheses. And then you come right here in the middle and then fill that in. That's how we make our leaf. Right, let me show you on a plate here too so you can really see what I'm talking about. All right, so parentheses and then parentheses and then we just fill this in. And you can make any size with this. You can come in really small. And again, this is a, a very uh, childlike kind of leaf. You can keep it very simple like that. It lends itself well to a nice folk art feel. Um, if you want to do something a little bit fancier, then you can kind of play with the end here and kind of take it more to a little point. See what that did? It's kind of nice. And then just do a delicate point lift off with a light hand. So again, take this out to a point, lift off with a light hand, and then take this out to a point and then lift off with a light hand. Do the same thing here. All right, that, so that gives you a big visual representation of basically you know, the basic shape of a very, you know, for, for a beginner, this is a great way to start with these basic shapes for our leaves. All right, so now I'm gonna finish coming in. And I'm working pretty fast here, so I might be picking up some of that black. And so that's okay. Yours, I would recommend you waiting a little bit for this to set up and dry. If you do happen to be working in this situation and you do pick up some of this background and that black, it's actually kind of nice. It just pulls in, that black pulls in and actually creates some nice shadows at times. It also kind of makes that green turn into more of what I would call like a sage green. So don't let that bum you out too much if it does pull in to it. And if it, did, if it does get too dark, you can always just come back in once it's dry and very easily pull in a much lighter green over the surface here. So but again, that basic stroke here is that parentheses and parentheses, and then you wanna take that brush over the side for better coverage over the surface, and then lightly fill that in. Keep pulling these in here. And I want some strong, I'm running into a situation here where to me it feels like it looks too similar to the turquoise. So I'm gonna lighten up this green quite a bit so that I have some nice contrast here. Because I was kind of losing, I felt like I was losing where that leaf really was over the surface here. The other thing that's pretty, if you do a different color for the rain boot, uh, the other thing that's quite lovely is also to make a leaf that uh, is a little bit more of actually a turquoise color. And that's also really pretty too. So like if you had a purple rain boot or a hot pink rain boot, or even a black rain boot, you could have that really striking uh, turquoise color as your leaves. And that's very dramatic and fun, different fun thing to do too. We are almost done here. Again, parentheses, parentheses, and then fill that in. Definitely picking up a lot of that wet paint underneath, so I have to do a lot of 
light-handed work over the top here. So again, turn that brush over to the side to help fill in the rest here. All right, beautiful, it's awesome. Okay, so now what we need to do is, I'm gonna touch up my rain boot just a tad and do kind of a cross stroke over the surface uh, so that it's a little bit more even all the way over the top. And a fun way to do that is to do a cross hatch stroke. So I'm gonna take my Big Daddy brush again and some more of this turquoise color and I'm gonna work it back and forth in what looks like the letter X over the surface. And I do a lot of repetition on this, and it gives me really good coverage over the surface. So this just adds some nice textural effect here over the top. Because I was noticing there was too much of this uh, uniform brush stroke coming in from either direction and I want a more painterly look over the surface. So that was okay for my first coat, but now I'm working in a second coat and I'm gonna go ahead and come back in for a more textural look. And again, that crosshatch effect, just keep working that back and forth over the surface in as much area as you can where the space allows. Again, just lightly work that back and forth. And it feels like you're making the letter X over and over and over again. I picked up a little blue on that one. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and work back into that. Get a nice cross hatch effect here. Back and forth, just like the letter X there. All right, it is warming up in the studio. So, off this goes. It's freezing upstairs. That went away. Well, we don't have AC down here, so like that would make sense. Okay, so, okay, so we've got our turquoise here in the background. And then if you wanna add some other fun textural looks to this too, you can always come back in with a little bit more white. So let's kind of touch into that and see what that looks like. See, that's kind of fun too. So a teeny tiny amount of white, just kind of lightly push that in. And again, that motion feels like making the letter X over and over again. So again, just a, a nice painterly texture over the top. So it'll make you feel like a pro. Plus, it's very relaxing. It's kind of fun to do that. It does great things for your brain, helps you really stress, so that's good. Okay, so now let's do some roses. We're gonna to start to talk about our pattern work that comes in here over the top. And so this is a very fun, easy rose. And I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to do this. All right, so I'm gonna take my little bit brush here, and the very first step that I'm gonna do I'm gonna show you one technique here on my plate and then I'm gonna do another technique here on the canvas. So I'm gonna do the more painterly technique on the canvas and then uh, I'm gonna show you a way to do a spiral effect too. So some people prefer a fun spiral look on top of their rows. So they've just painted in this whole solid area here. And this is just kind of a very simple abstract way to do it but you just take a little spiral shape to make like a circle, 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 and you just keep coming around. Then you do those little half circles around that. So you can do that kind of a pattern over the top of the rose, and then you can just walk away. And it's just kind of a fun, abstracted way to do a rose. So that's one way to do it. So again, let's do that one more time. So again, it just kind of looks like you make a little spiral and did y'all notice my pinky here? Some of y'all don't notice what's happening. But I'm holding my pinky, it's resting on this plate or theoretically the canvas, it would be resting on the canvas. That helps stabilize my hand. So if you have a shaky hand, it helps keep it steady so that you can do some of those like precision moves or strokes in there. 
So that helps steady your hand, keep it stable. But again, that spiral there in the center, and then you can just make some of those little half circles that come all the way around it. So again, really fun way to do a rose that way. Now let's show a more textural look on the actual canvas here. So this time I'm actually going to start with white. I need more white. All right, let's get some. All right, so I've got a little bit brush, white paint. I'm gonna go ahead and load it up here. I do a little twist here into the paint. See, I'm kind of twisting it between my fingertips. All right, that loads up the brush. Also rotates the head of the brush into a nice fine point. Nice little trick there. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and start to push, again, what looks like little half circles. There is my puppy dog coming to see me. My little Ira. I hear her, I hear her little paws. All right, so little half circles or, um, some people, if it feels good to think about it, like, again, parentheses, parentheses. That's a great motion that I use a lot in painting. Because people are very familiar with it. The brain is very familiar with it. So it doesn't feel very intimidating to do that because we do that shape all the time. So I keep working this all the way towards the inside. Hey, sweetie pie. She's going to go potty. My filming station is located right by the doggy door where she goes outside, so... We get doggy activity. All right, so that's our first step. That's our first layer. And you can already see a very dramatic change. It's already evolving into that rose. So that's really awesome. So I'm going to do this very same step on my other ones here. So again, that feeling of circular pattern. Keep working. You start on the outside, just towards the edge. And then just keep working towards the inside here. And just keep doing this on all of them here. I'm gonna do a quick, I picked up a little bit of wet black on that one. So I'm gonna do a quick wipe on my brush. If that happens, you can do the same thing. All right, and then same thing here. Soft half circles. Again, they kind of feel like that parenthesis stroke. And just keep working that towards the inside until they get smaller and smaller. All the way towards the inside. All the way towards the inside. Ooh, I just did a big old blob of green. There are no mistakes, only possibilities. <laughs> Oh, it's just a shadow. That's what that is. Okay, no worries. All right, so we've got a great foundation here. Now I'm going to come in with some really bright, dark undertones now. So like, for example, on the lavender now, it's time to come in with purple. Or on the um, pink, it's time to come in with the red. So let's do the red here first. A little bit brush coming in with a little bit of red now, and I'm going to do a little spot here in the center, just kind of push and lift off, and push and lift off gently, push and lift off gently. That's the first thing. And then you can, I'm going to continue rotating the head of the brush into the paint, and then I'm going to do that same stroke where I do that red that will work into the rose. I'll do a few of these and they will softly kind of blend into that white and that's actually a good thing. So just do a few of those, creates those little shadows. Same thing here. Same stroke that we did with the white, but this time just coming in with a little bit of that red for some of that shadow and helps to find some of those uh, petals. All right, now I'm going to come in with the purple. So a little bit brush again. Gave him a bath right off. Make sure you get all that water out of there. Really important. Don't forget that step. You don't want that water run. Picking up that purple. Doing that little spot here in the center. 
spot here. And then again, those little circular patterns that will come in around here. Just a few of those. Blends nicely with the white and creates some nice little shadows here. Beautiful, I love it. Okay, um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach you a different way to do a flower. And so I'm gonna show you, just kinda, kinda where I want it. So maybe one right here. So this is, if you are not a big fan of the roses and you want something even more simple than this, it exists. And so we're gonna do some of that for y'all. All right, so I'm gonna take my little buddy brush here and let's see mm. let's do some more purple so there's different things you can do you can do different colors with this style of flower but it's basically called a pounce effect and it is quite lovely and uh, some people actually just wherever i put in those big round circles for the roses you could actually just pounce right over the top of that like if you just if you did your roses and you're like i can't do this this is not my thing. Then you can try this pounce effect and everybody loves it because it works out really well. Uh, so the paint that I have here, I wanna make sure that I have some purple and then some pure white. Also, if you add um, some cobalt blue to it, we'll get some of that too. It almost starts to feel like a hydrangea, which is quite lovely. So that's very pretty too. So that gives you some options, you know, get those creative juices flowing here. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna start with purple. Let's start with purple. So let's do that. Hitting on the side of the brush. Let's give it a little close up here. There, I wanna make sure you can see it really well. See, that, not that side, but that side on the line edge. And then I'm going to just tap, tap, tap. And I'm going to just tap it out into a little circle shape here. Tap, tap, tap. And you just tap on the side of the brush. Very easy therapeutic feel to this, which is awesome. All right, there we go. Then I'm going to come in with some white. Tap, tap, tap. Already that beautiful texture is starting to emerge and looking really awesome here. You could almost just leave it just as it is if you're super stoked with just that. You can leave it just like that. Um, if you wanna play a little bit and get some blue, gonna go in with some cobalt blue. Kinda tap that in. And you can already see, if you were to do this on a much larger scale, uh, this would make for some very beautiful hydrangeas. So this is a nice look here. Can look a little bit more white. It's a very fun way to do this. You could have lots of round circles of this type of flower too. Really nice. Uh, so that's another way to do it. Um, and then also let's do a few more like tinier little vines that come out of this. That would be really nice. So I'm gonna go back in with my little bit brush here. And I've got my green and I'm gonna darken this up quite a bit. Let's do some Green and blue, green and blue. See, see how dark that is though? It's becoming very dark. So this is a way for me to darken up the green, but by adding that blue to it, it's going to give it some really nice coverage over the surface of the canvas. Because as I mentioned before, the green just on its own, in fact, almost all the jewel tones in a medium body paint, very transparent. So any direction you can mix them with another color just helps uh, give them you know, a better chance at being uh, more opaque on the canvas, helps, helps a little bit. And white is most definitely the very best, but sometimes we can't always go that direction because we're trying to you know, deepen and darken the color. So in this way, I'm trying to darken it up a little bit, but not be too harsh. And I still wanna keep the brights of the green, so that's why I added the blue. So now I've got that mixed up. I'm gonna go ahead and twist the head of my brush here into that color. And then I wanna make a really pretty, you know, couple little vines that are coming out here. So I start with just one delicate little line. 
and then I just lightly lift off here on the edge. Now it's kind of going into my wet paint, which trust me, that makes it more challenging. If your paint was dry and set up your rain boot, for example, that line would just be very solid over the top, much easier to do. But mine's kind of dragging into that wet paint and it's creating some transparency. So I'm having to come in with a much more gentle hand over the top to kind of finesse that in. But light, light hand over the surface there. Then I can do tiny little leaves off of each side. And this is, the subtlety of this is getting a little bit lost on the canvas. So let me show you here on a plate too, just to make sure you get the instruction. But again, light little vines that come down or stems. Then we want to do tiny little leaves that come off of each side. So that basic motion of it, again, is, but tiny, little parentheses, little parentheses, and they just connect. And I do come down in a diagonal on each side. And see, that's very lovely. That's a different style that you can do. So I'm gonna have this come down on each side here. So again, a little bit of a diagonal, and then that basic stroke is just parentheses, parentheses, and they connect, and they make that really pretty little leaf look. Going back through the center there. Same thing over here. Very delicate hand. Try to hold it out to the side. And just work it out to a point on each side there. All right, and then some of those you can just, if you wanna just leave them as delicate lines that just come down. You can do that too without the little leaves. All right. Very, very pretty. Okay. Now another step that we can do, this is another really beautiful, fun, easy beginner trick, is making the little dot effect, which can do a really cool pattern. Uh, like little polka dots, or they make for beautiful flowers and arrangement as well. So I actually come in with my big daddy brush, but I'm gonna use the wooden handle. And I'm gonna show you with some white paint, because it's going to be very striking here over the background. So I'm gonna take that brush, I'm gonna dip into the white paint there, and then I'm just going to press straight forward. And see, that looks like little baby's breath. It's peeking out of this bouquet. And if you want to have a smaller circle, then that's super easy. You just, you can really adjust this by size of brush and you can come in and do lots of different sizes here too. With a different wooden handle there, make it smaller. So pretty easy to adjust there on that. All right, keep going here. a few more of these details. This is looking awesome. Wonderful. I love it. I'm going to do a few more here on the inside. And you can do these in different colors too. So you know, that's really fun too. Um, let's see, let's take a look, little look-see here. Like if you did this with red, just looks like little red flowers coming down there. So that's a really nice look too. Sometimes you have to hit it more than once, but that's okay. 
Let's do a few more of those over here. All right, awesome. All right, so now we're getting down to the details around the edge here. So I'm gonna come in, I'm, I'm loving the ease of the dots. And so we can actually do this uh, really fun look where you do like little dots and dashes all around the boot. And this is really fun and easy. So loving the dot effect. So instead of using it as a flower now, this time we're using it as more of a dot design. So I'm gonna go ahead and push right into that white. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a little dot here. Do one here. I'm gonna add, you could you actually do dots all the way around with that a line. That would be really easy too. But I'm gonna give a little space for a line. And I'll continue this all the way around. Just keep going. And you can make these, if this is a little bit too bold and powerful for your taste, and of course you can make it a lot smaller. And I also want to make it really big so that it's very impactful for y'all so that you see it too. All right, so I'm going to keep going here. Just all the way around this lovely bamboo here. We're almost done. We're almost home. There's no place like home. Sweet. Okay, so now it's line work time. See, already you can see that's it's really awesome. There's a nice pop to that. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit brush. So you want to find a tiny liner brush, a little bit, and then come in hot. I got to do my superpower glasses here these are tiny little lines. So I'm going to do a little twist here into the white paint. And then remember that technique, I said rest the weight of your hand on your pinky. That helps stabilize your hand. And then ideally you want your canvas to be, mine's still a little bit wet, which does make this challenging. I have to have a very light hand when I do this because I will pick up some of that wet black paint. So it is much easier on you if you wait for your background to be dry, because then this line work becomes really easy over the top. Some people also prefer paint pens for this, which are also a beautiful thing. So you can do that too. Just keep going. Almost done. Yeah. Lovely. So we have it all defined now. Very, very awesome. All right. I'm going to do a little line work here on the bottom of the boot. And I want it to be a little bit contrasting, but not a hard black line. So I'm going to come in with that dark blue and green. Got my little bit brush loaded up here. I'm going to twist it into a nice fine point. And then I want that little line that comes in here at the base. Just a little reference to where that heel starts. The soft curve that goes all the way across there. So we are just about done, it's pretty exciting. Actually, you could be totally done at this stage, absolutely. Um, if you want to do a positive work, which is nice, it just kind of helps remind you of you know, where your head should be and good place and <sighs> love, joy, peace. Take a deep breath, <laughs> all those good things. All right, then you can do your word right in through here. Now, one of the things that I do recommend is your pencil. So wait till this is all completely dry. That really helps with forgiveness. Forgiveness is great. So 
if you have a completely dry background and you pencil in your word, then you have the freedom to then erase if it doesn't quite work out. No problem. Uh, so you can erase it, work it out, make sure it fits into the space that you're happy with the way that your word works. And then you can go over the top with your paint and just follow it with your little bit brush. So I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, let's do some lab here. Okay, kind of penciled it in. And then I'm going to come in with my little bit brush and some white paint. So again, twist. We really want a nice twist on this. Also, on the glasses. Here we go. Okay. A little twist, a nice fine point. Uh, again, remember the little trick where your pinky is your, um, like your kickstand on a bike. It keeps you steady. So you can do some of those moves here. If you need that, remember that. Now remember my canvas is still a little bit wet here and tacky, so I'm picking up some of that black. Because I'm working fast, going live, but you should wait for yours to be dry. And this will not be a problem. paint is always a little bit bigger than the pencil, so you kind of have to allow for that too. And I'll come back over this with a double coat. Alright, we're getting there. Very nice. I'm going to wait till this, till this dries to do that double coat on that a little bit later because right now I just keep pulling in a lot of that black. So we're going to let that set up and dry, but I've got a great foundation there for my word. as a great start there. And then, of course, signing your masterpiece. And I think this is such a small, you, you know, a lot of people like a small signature. You can definitely paint it in with a really tiny, tiny little brush or... Um, I like Sharpies, so Sharpies are awesome. Some of the art snobs do not. That's okay. So I can do a little tipsy artist. But this class is not for art snobs, no. Mm -mm. This redneck beginner painting right here at its finest. All right, so this is beautiful. We love this. All right, this is a lovely rain boot for beginners. All right, I swear you can do this. It's super easy. And no matter what, you're going to have a great time doing it. Again, the main goal is to relax and take a deep breath, relax, and have a really good time because this is supposed to be a time for women and men if you're, you know, Yay, smart man, joining me here today. <laughs> That's awesome. I have, I just have so many women that come paint with me. But again, the main goal is to relax and have a really, really, really good time. All right, so again, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been awesome. We're thankful that we have some sunshine today, a little break from all the rain, but just in case, we've got our rain boot now, all right? All right, y'all have fun today. Thank you again, and we will see you next Friday at noon. Every Friday we go live at noon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. I'm going to turn it off somehow. Let's do that.